Hello everyone! In this Visual Studio Code and TensorFlow tutorial, we explain how to install and how to use TensorFlow in VS Code and in a virtual environment. Okay, so let's immediately start. The first step is to open Command Prompt. So, click on Start and search for Command Prompt. And open Command Prompt. So, what I will do over here? I will create a separate folder and from that folder I will start VS Code. That folder will be will serve as the main folder of my virtual environment. So let's do that. First of all, I will go to the D drive and over here I will create my folder. The name of the folder is test1. Then let's go to test1 folder and from this test1 folder let's start VS Code. We start the VS Code by typing code and period. Period means that we are initializing the VS Code from this workspace folder. And let's click on Enter. Okay, the next step is to create a new file. There are several ways to do that. I like to click on File and then click on New File and I will call the file as test one dot Pi. It's very important that the file has the extension pi since we are creating the Python file and click on enter and click on create file. The first step is to create our virtual environment. However, before we create a virtual environment, let's first explain the main motivation for creating the virtual environment. What is a virtual environment? Loosely speaking, a virtual environment is a container that consists of the Python interpreter and a set of packages. When we create a new virtual environment, you will see that Python assumes that there are no packages inside of that virtual environment. That is, by creating a virtual environment, we start from zero. That is completely clean install. And then, we can precisely control what are the packages that we want to install. Now, when we leave that virtual environment, all the packages that are installed in that virtual environment stay in that virtual environment and do not affect the global Python environment as well as other virtual environments. That is, we can completely customize Python packages and Python packages installation in a virtual environment. And this saves time, avoids conflicts, and creates a very clean development environments that do not interfere with each other. Okay, so what we will do over here, we will install a TensorFlow in a virtual environment. So let's see how to do that. Now, press Control, Shift, and P. And over here, but before I say what you need to do again, this window is created by pressing Ctrl, Shift, and P on the keyboard. And then search for Create Environment. Okay, over here we have two options. The first option is the classical Python virtual environment, and we will choose that option. However, the second option is a Conda virtual environment. Let's choose the VNV, that is the classical Python virtual environment, and click OK. The next step is to select the interpreter. In our case, we will be using this interpreter, that is Python 3.12. Let's click over here, and you can see that the environment is being created. At the same time, you will notice that over here, a new folder is created. Okay, a new folder is created, and this folder completely defines our environments and all the scripts, packages, and other files installed in that environment. To run a code in an environment, we need to first activate the environment. Now, I'm using the newest version of VS Code, and I noticed that, that in this VS code version, that is in the newest version, activation of environment is not clearly denoted. That is, at least I'm not able to figure it out if it's clearly activated or not. 
then. For that purpose, I wrote this piece of code that will actually investigate if the environment is activated. And let's do that. So what's happening over here? I'm importing the system. Then I'm defining a simple function. And this function will return 1 or 0, depending if the environment is activated or not. That is, if the environment is activated, it will return 1, and that's true. And then what I will do, I will simply print the value. So I will call this function in the print statement, and I will print the value. Okay, now let's run this code, and let's see what will happen. Although this environment is created, let's investigate, did VS Code actually activate that environment? Okay, so it's written over here that this environment is activated. However, if you are familiar with the command line creation of the virtual environment, they should always be here, parentheses and the name of the environment. However, you don't see it in the newer versions of the VS Code. And that's kind of thing that might be confusing. Now, if you click over here, you can see that this interpreter is actually selected and this is inside of our virtual environment so we can do it again and you can see that this code returns true however what i will do here and what i suggest to other people to do is to explicitly activate the environment in that case and by doing this you avoid any confusion to activate the environment inside of this script folder let me just expand everything that is inside vnb there is a scripts folder. Inside of the script folder, there is this file activate.bat. This is basically a scripting file that we can call. Now, look what I will do. I will call this file from my terminal. So, to call this file, I need to specify the relative path to that file. That file is in the VNV. It's under scripts. And the name of the file is activate. Dot bat. And let's run this. Nothing happens. However, if I run it like this, you will see that the environment is actually activated explicitly, as you can see over here. This is what I want to see. Okay? Now, let me close this file and let's run this file again. Run Python and let's run in the terminal and you see that it's true again. Now, Let's investigate what are the packages that are currently installed in this environment. Pip list. Let's see the packages. Pip or pipe, however you like to pronounce. And over here you can see that we only have pip installed as a package inside of this environment. The next step is to install TensorFlow. So how to install TensorFlow? To install the TensorFlow, I will simply run this command. pip or pipe3 install with this option upgrade and TensorFlow. And I'm going to install the CPU version of TensorFlow. That is not GPU. So let's run this and let's see what will happen. Okay, now the process will start and this will take some time. Since TensorFlow is relatively large, you can see that over here, we are dealing with almost like 400 megabytes of codes and everything, of packages. And there are few dependencies that need to be installed. You will see over here, inst installing something else. You'll see new files popping up here. And yeah, you see how things are being populated. Because TensorFlow is a big, big, big environment big machine learning package okay so be patient over here now the next step is to actually verify the packages that are installed so let's type pip list again and let's see what is being installed aha uh -huh. now instead of a single pip or pipe pa package you can see a bunch of things that are installed right so you see a lot of things that are installed Another thing that we would like to install is also NumPy. pip install NumPy. And let's see. It's already being actually satisfied. Okay. Now, a nice thing to observe here is that there is a 
new folder inside the library and you can see that these this name of the folder is site packages and you can see other packages that are being installed as well as then as well as over here you can also see them here good now let's verify that tensorflow is actually installed and that you can here is the tensorflow test example okay so first of all i'm importing tensorflow as tf and then i'm defining two matrices matrix one and matrix two they're simply one two three four this is the first matrix and the second matrix is five six seven eight then I'm defining here a product that is a multiplying matrix one and matrix two and I store the result in a product and over here I convert matrix one to numpy object matrix two to numpy object and result to the numpy object and finally I'm printing first matrix second matrix and the result okay do the right click run Python, run file in the terminal, ignore these warnings, and you can see this is the first matrix that's being printed over here, this is the second matrix that's being printed over here, and here is the final result, and that's it. This means that we have properly installed TensorFlow. Now, finally, I will deactivate my environment, environment by just typing deactivate, and let's now run, try to run this code again. So do the right click, run Python, and run Python file in terminal. So let's see what will happen. Okay. You can see that you can still run this since the environment is still being activated internally by VS Code. Okay, that's all for today.